What's good? It's D&D Section, and we're all Ted Daily. Uh, the project kind of came together with, like, just, like, everything going on around me. Love Lies Bleeding. It actually took me eight months. The great thing about the tape is it took me eight months to make the tape. I dropped it on the eighth month of the year, on the eighth day at 11.58, and it was eight tracks. Yeah, so everything manifested in eight. It's crazy. Purposefully. Some was purposefully, some wasn't. Like, the eight-track thing wasn't really on purpose. And then it being the eighth month on the eighth day, that wasn't necessarily on purpose either. It just, it just happened. So, yeah. Yeah, but nah. The tape was, the process was dope because it was just like some songs, like even the last song on the tape was the first song I made <clears throat> in 2019. And then the biggest song on the tape I made it like, Get Out Your Feelings, I made that like two weeks before the tape drop and I just put it on there. Most of the other stuff was like pretty brand new. Um, AJ only produced Get Out Your Feelings and then the rest was produced by Jay-Z Productions. So which is these two guys, Juno the Gemini and Mastodon on the beat. And those two guys basically executive produced the whole last project. And then AJ just came in last minute and then made Get Out Your Feelings with Juno. And then it just ended up being like crazy. It was just like the project was basically like back and forth from my house to Isaac's house and it was just like sometimes we don't even leave the studio I think at one point this summer we were in the studio for like 14 days straight like no showering no anything like obviously showering but like I don't know if Jason showered because yeah. Jason, Jason didn't go home but we we're in the studio for like 14 days straight non-stop music like maybe like a smoke break and maybe get some food but it was just non-stop music like for the past year it's been non-stop music I think probably like 20 days this year i haven't been in the studio so yeah it's just non-stop music yeah it's, I, I i i'm one of those guys that like if i if i'm not in the studio then i feel like i'm actually like failing in life <laughs> like if i'm not in the studio like i'm one of those people that like if i spend like a day away from the studio i'll call my manager and i'll be like bro like i feel so unproductive like i feel like i don't i don't have any songs and i could i could have like I probably have like 200 unreleased songs, but like, I'll just sit there and I'll be like, man, like all this is garbage. Like I need to get back in the studio. Uh, I'm like a fiend, bro. Like it's like a drug. As soon as you get one, like as soon as you get a, a feeling of that, like like making a new song is like, it's like a high. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's like creating a whole new emotion, creating a whole new vibe. Uh, I grew up on Fela and Femi Kuti. Cause my dad is like really close to like Femi. But then my dad is also like one of those, you know, like those Nigerians is just obsessed with fella. So like, I just like, my whole childhood was fella. I don't remember hearing anything else but fella. And then I remember the first real like African music that I actually fell in love with was probably like Style Plus. Cause I remember how much I love Style Plus and P-Square. But then American Influences was like 50 Cent. Like I've always been like a big 50 Cent fan, Nas. Um, <clears throat> and then Mac Miller. Mac Miller's even the reason why I even, because I, you know, I would always, you know, as a kid, you pretend like, you know, you hear, you see Eminem videos and stuff, and you're like, oh, I want to rap like Eminem, but then you can't rap like Eminem. But then <clears throat> I remember like Mac Miller was the first guy that like I, I saw like low budget videos and just like situations that I could relate to. So Mac was like the main reason I even really started making music was Mac Miller. But then my fella background is like deep, like. I probably know like <laughs> more fella songs than I should at my age because of my dad but like a lot of fella and jazz and house music because my dad likes like composition more than he likes lyrics so like I've always been so composition has always been like a big thing for me so like production to me is more important than than words so that's all for my dad really man uh power show yeah power show Power shows are crazy, but teacher don't teach me no, uh, nonsense. Yeah, it's between those two. Teacher don't teach me nonsense because there's a there's a part I'm trying to sample. That, that's that's why it might be up there, but it's really power show. But teacher don't te teach me nonsense. It has this one part that I really want to sample. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people would be surprised to know that there's like a whole cultural Nigerian movement going on in America. Like, 
there's like Afrobeat is taking over America at like an alarming rate, like more than I even expected. Like it's like, cause in like a six month span, it turned from just interest to like, wow, like this is a whole thing. Like, cause it's mostly girls, cause you know girls they love to dance, da 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 da. And you know, there's so much trap music in America, there's not that many vibes. So when people like Burner Boy and David and Wiz and Tiwa and Malik Berries and Santis of the world are like dropping music, it now people in america are looking for american nigerian artists that are making similar vibes but at the same time like there's a huge african community in in, in nigeria and um in atlanta so i'd probably say there's probably like the population of nigerians in atlanta is, is probably the biggest outside of london i would say i would compare it to london but i wouldn't say it's as massive as london but it's up there for sure it was uh, me and Zarian had like message like the week before and we were talking about when could we get in the studio and everything. And then I sat down with Jay-Z Productions, Juno and Mastodon. And then I was just telling them like, bro, let's just like, it was a sunny day. And in our studio, we always have like the windows open because like I really like open spaces because I don't like artificial light, like especially when I'm in a studio space. I'd rather have all lights off and like a couple candles, but it was like a really sunny day. And I was telling them, I said, yo, y'all got to make like a really bright exciting beat and we really sat there us three and we really like produced it together me jason and uh and uh isaac which is mastodon and juno and we just really like took our time to create like this whole vibe and then zarion walked in and then zarion came up with like the whole like he came up with like the whole melody in his head and we started to put words to it and we all really wrote and created it together and then i just freestyled the verse then originally it was just me and zarion and then my boy toya who's also in nigeria who's also on the track i mean who's also in atlanta who's also on the track i i messaged him out and he just told me he's like bro i have to be on the song i have to be on the song i have to be on the song and i was like all right man take off my because i think i had a, uh my verse might have been longer and i moved it and then he just he, we sent it to him and he just did a madness and then the track just came out crazy <laughs> Yeah, that record was a crazy record because, like, that was the first day that, like, all three of my producers had cooked up a beat together. And it, it wasn't even, like, and that was the day that we kind of knew that if all three of them are going to be on a beat together, then it's going to be a record. And I remember, <clears throat> I didn't even, I, I can't even take credit for the initial melody because I didn't even have my initial, what I initially had on it wasn't really like that. AJ had come up with, like, the... Da, na, 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 na. and i was like oh whoa like this is that's a crazy melody and then i, I kind of just wrote it to how i felt at the time because at the time i felt like you know um a lot of people were trying to like were trying to hold their nuts on me if that's the best way to say it so i um so i felt like i just had to kind of find a way of just subtly like making a record about like just being humble and like money and money and and clout isn't the only thing that really matters in life so that record is actually a lot deeper to me than a lot of people really understand. And I thought it was going to be the biggest song on the project, but Get Out Your Feelings just it wasn't. It was unstoppable when it started. <laughs> I was thinking like, who is like the, who, what character would best describe me if I, was, if, it was, if I was a movie that would relate to the song? And I remember I was just like thinking one day like, damn, I'm big. Who else is big? And I was thinking like Debo. But then I, and I really like crazy things. I actually wrote out the whole treatment for that video. That was actually all my idea. No one came to me with the idea. I just, one day I woke up and I was like, I want to be Debo. And then I watched the Friday movie and I took screenshots of like different parts and different shot angles that I wanted to happen. And then we just, I, I had sent it to my uh, videographer and he was like, whoa, this is, this is dope. This is crazy. This is an insane concept. This is something people are going to relate to. And we ended up just making it happen because it was just like, it was just crazy. It was just crazy that it came out the way it was. It didn't even come out fully how it was because like there were at least like eight scenes that we weren't able to shoot. But so the video didn't even come out to the best quality it could have been. That wasn't even supposed to be the artwork. Yeah, because I'm going to say this. One of my boys, I'm not going to mention his name, capped out on me on, on sending me my cover art. And um, so I remember it was like the day, what, what was it like? like two days before yeah like two days before like i was panicking i was like bro i don't even have a cover art and um and then we ran to botanical gardens and then we just did like a whole photo shoot and it wasn't even supposed to be for the cover art it was supposed to be for the initial rollout and then we just ended up catching this crazy image and then they just sent me they texted to me and then i was then i was like yo this is a crazy image this is like it this is the whole vibe of the project but then all we had to change was the font a couple things and then 
it just came out crazy but that was just like random I mean, we actually shot the headshots video that day that we haven't even released i feel like when i start listening to too many people it kind of distracts me so i'm really listening to myself like my favorite rapper right now is this guy from dc called q the fool so i've been listening to him a lot some baby keem i really like baby keem there's nothing else that i'm really spinning except from like me i like obviously my boy mason 2500 don't sleep and uh and that Dio same energy that's my favorite track right now is that same energy track by Dio. yeah Dio was the first guy in the whole scene to show me love so yeah Dio was the first guy because like first guy to come to the studio for real first guy to give me a feature first guy to actually give me legitimate advice didn't try and sell me nothing guy was just like a real Dio's a real nigga man a real nigga for real that boy is crazy like mason is the only person i know that works just as hard as me like in my kind of age demographic of what's going on right now with like african artists doing hip-hop and stuff but like mace is the only guy because i'm in the studio every day but i know space is in the studio every day as well and mace is always like experimenting as well but mace is a uh, mace is crazy crazy talented and mace has some crazy tracks on the way like crazy <laughs> yeah i have afrobeat tracks already like but I'm not really, it's not really Afro Beach, more like Afro Fusion. So, like, I'm trying to find a way. Uh, kind of created a sound that I don't really want to talk too much about. But <laughs> but just blending American and Afro Beat, that's all I can really say. But <laughs> I'll play you guys some stuff, but I, I don't really want to talk about it too much. <laughs> the Alternative Network.